Hi, this is Mero with Tax Tutor. I wanted to talk about the sell of a primary residence and how that works with getting the exclusion when you sell that. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons below. So with the sale of a primary residence, there is an exclusion. To get the exclusion, you have to own that residence and it be your personal residence for two out of the past five years. So the way that works is you look at the past five years and as long as you own the home and you used it as a personal residence during two years out of that five year period, you can exclude a certain part of the gain of that sell. And that gain is 250,000 is, is how much gain you can exclude. Or if you file a joint return, it's 500,000. So th there's no real designation there. If you're, if you're file a single head of household or married filing separate, it's the 250. If you file a joint return, you get the $500,000 exclusion is how that works. You are not required to roll over the money from that residence into a new residence. Uh, so a lot of people think that they have to roll the money over, but in reality, when you sell that residence, let's say you sell it for a $300,000 gain, you file a joint return, so all the gain is excluded, you've owned it for two years, you've lived in it for two years, you meet all, all the, the requirements, you can sell that residence and take all the proceeds from, that, from the sale of that residence and do whatever you want with it. You don't have to put it into a new house, you don't have to put it into real estate, you don't have to do anything with it. You can go and stick it in the bank, you can cash it out and stick it under your mattress, you can do whatever you want with it. There is one carve out in that, in that law, and that is if you ever depreciated the home during the time that you owned it. So that would apply is if, if you ever rented out the home. Uh, so let's say that you bought the home, you lived in it for two years, and then you rented it out for two years. So you meet the two year rule, but then since you rented it out as part of rental, you take depreciation on the home. So when you depreciate a home, you have what's called depreciation recapture, and you basically pay tax on the depreciation that you've taken over that home. Because when you depreciate a home, you get a tax benefit, you get a write-off for doing that. And so the tax law requires you to then uh, offset that write-off with recapturing that and bringing that back into income. That also applies if you have, if you're a business owner and you have a home office and you're deducting that home office as part of your home office deduction, then that also comes back in as taxable as well. Uh, now, there are ways that you can get a reduced exclusion. So let's say that you don't meet that two-year test. Let's say you bought the home and then a year later, something happened and you needed to sell the home and you needed to move. So the tax code does allow you to have a reduced exclusion in cases like that. And it would have to be for very certain reasons. The tax code recognizes if you had to move for a job. So let's say you have a job in a particular city, you have a home and all that, you bought it a year, you owned it for a year, and now all of a sudden you've got to move to another state, another city, somewhere far away, and you have to sell that home in order for that job. So the tax code allows you to do that. Since you owned the home, you only met half the requirement, you owned it for one year rather than the two years, you would get half the exclusion. So if you were single uh, or not filing a joint return, you'd get $125,000 exclusion. If you were filed a joint return, you'd get a $250,000 exclusion. Basically the way is how that would work out. There are other reasons that could come up that would give you a reduced exclusion. So we talked about moving for a job. Uh, you could also move for health if you had some health issues that came up and you needed to move. Um, you know, you know, let's say you became incapacitated. You, you know, let's say you lived in like a split level home where you walk in the front door and you either got to go up the stairs or down the stairs and now you're in a wheelchair and stairs don't really work for you. That would be a, a health reason why you would be selling a home and moving and you, you could get a reduced exclusion for that. There's also unforeseeable events that can give you a reduced exclusion. These would include things like your home being destroyed or being condemned or death, divorce, or unemployment. If you become unemployed and you can't afford the home anymore and you've got to sell it, then you can get a reduced exclusion. Um, the marriage could be, uh, you know, let's say that you're single and you have three kids and then you marry somebody who's single and has three kids as well and now you got six kids and your home has 
three bedrooms in it or four, you know, it's just too small for the new family that you have, your, your new joint family that's coming in. That's another area of the tax code that, that allows you to get this reduced or partial exclusion for doing that. Uh, and then finally, the, the basis of the home is important to, to hit on. So what is the basis? What is considered gain on, on, a, on, a, on a residence? I've had clients contact me before and they thought that the 250 and the 500 applied to the sale price of it. And that is actually not true. It applies to your gain. So is what you have to do is you have to figure out, go back and see how much you bought that house for. So let's say that you filed a joint return and 10 years ago you bought the house for $200,000. And you've lived in it the 10 years, you meet all the, all the requirements and everything of that. And now the home is appreciated and now it's worth $800,000. So it went from two to $800,000. When you sell that home for $800,000, you have a $200,000 basis because that's what you originally bought it for. So now you have a $600,000 gain. So the first half a million, if you're married, finally in joint return, uh, the first half a million will be excluded and then that additional 100,000 will be taxed at long-term capital gains rates. However, that your basis does not just include how much you originally bought it for. It also includes how much money you've put into that home over the time that you've owned it. So let's say in that 10 years that you've owned it, you uh, remodeled the kitchen and a couple of the bathrooms and things like that. And you put say $200,000 in, into the home. You bought it for 200, you put another 200,000 in. Well, now that makes your basis 400,000. And when you sell it for 800,000, you minus what you bought, for, bought it for, the 200,000, then you minus how much money you put into it, the other 200,000. Well, now you only have a $400,000 gain. The entire thing is excluded and you don't have to pay any tax on that gain uh, on the sale of that residence, even though you sold it for, for more than the 500,000. You sold it for 800, but had a $400,000 basis in it. So that's how the sale of a primary residence works. Uh, again, if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons below.